If any of these 10 things apply to you, then your Serato library is working against you. So the first sign that your music library is a total mess is if it's got a bunch of tracks that have track one, track two, track zero, one, oh, one, all these different variations. All these different variations can come from different sources. So they can come from YouTube rips. They can come from if, if you've got a music library from another DJ. And these can come from if you've ripped songs from a CD, put them onto your iTunes and then imported them into your Serato library. It's not your fault at all, because if you've imported a track from a CD and put it onto a computer, then there's no way of you actually getting the data from the CD because that's not how it works. But you need to make a conscious effort of updating all these tracks and all these tags to make sure that you know exactly what track is what. So the worst thing that can happen is you're DJing and you have a bunch of tracks that have track one, track two, and you have to listen to them to know what they are. That is just putting on extra pressure and extra time for you during your DJ sets. When you're DJing, you're going to be under immense pressure. You're going to play your first song and then after that, you literally have to keep the music going Going until the end of six or seven hours. So the last thing you want to be doing is going through all your music and being like, oh, what song is this? Let me listen to it quickly. You want to see the name of the track in front of you straight away so you know what track it is. So if you've got a bunch of tracks that are missing the, the song name, then I do suggest that you update them. Now, if you've got loads and loads of tracks, it's obviously going to take you a long time, but in order to clean up your music library, you are going to have to do this. There are a few tools out there like Music Brains Picard that can listen to the track and tell you the name of the track, but they don't really work that well. So so you are going to have to do it manually. So what I would say is just listen to the track. And if you know your music, you can type in the artist and you can type in the song name. Or if you're struggling that much, you can download Shazam, play the song, and it will tell you the details there and then. Do this for all your tracks and you should be good. You're not going to be able to do this all in one sitting, especially if you've got a thousand tracks that are like this. What I would say is spend 20 minutes a day, just Shazam in all the tracks that have track one, track two, and updating the artist and the song name. And I guarantee your music library will be a little bit more cleaner. The next sign that your Serato library is a mess is if your genre tags are missing or they're a complete mess. If you open up the browse tab inside your Serato, you're going to see all your genres inside Serato. There are going to be a bunch of random genres in there that you're not even going to know or not even going to make sense. They're going to be URLs in there. They're going to have different variations. And the one that I use all the time in my YouTube videos examples is you're going to have a lot of variations of hip hop. You're going to have hip hyphen hop, hip space hop, hip hop four slash rap, hip hop four slash R&B. You're going to have all these random genres. And what you need to do is clean them up and condense them so you only really have around about 20 genres. In your DJ career you're only going to be DJing around about 15 to 20 genres so you don't need to have all these random genres in there you just need to have 15 to 20 genres and when you have them all condensed like this it makes things a lot easier to navigate in your music library and a lot easier to organize. The navigation part say for example you want to play some R&B you can go over to your browse column and click R&B all your R&B tracks are going to be in there and then on from that you can create a smart crate so you can go genre is R&B and all your R&B tracks will go into that smart crate so when you're DJing you're scrolling through your track list oh I want to find some R&B tracks go into the genre R&B smart crate and you're good you'll find all your music and if you do this for all your tracks it will make navigating your music library a lot easier and then on from that organizing so what I tend to do is say for example I want to organize my R&B crate all I need to do is just go inside my R&B smart crate because I know that all my R&B tracks are in there then I can do my organization I can add some tags I can tag to say that some tracks are warm up main set I might go through and delete a bunch of tracks but it's so important to have your genres in one central location so you can go to there to either play or organize so what i'll say is go into your browse column have a look at the genres and clean them up if you want an automated solution check the links in the description down below the next sign that your music library is a mess is if you've got multiple versions of the same track we are a culprit of this of going to your record pools and downloading the dirty version the intro dirty the clean the mega hits the mega this the mega that and all these different variations but i'll be honest with you you don't need all those different variations. A few years ago, I stopped downloading cleans in my Serato library because I was like, I'm not going to be doing any kids' birthdays because I don't like doing kids' birthdays. I'm not going to be doing any radio shows because I'm not really that fussed about DJing on radio. So once I decided that, I stopped downloading cleans inside my music library. So that's one thing I've just managed to reduce my library from. When I go into my record pools, I do download the dirty version and the intro dirty version, but I'll listen to both of them. If the intro sounds exactly the same as the original one where it's got an eight bar intro, then what's the point of me downloading both? I'll download one or the other. But if if I feel like I need to have both of them, I will, but I won't make it a default. I feel like when I first started DJing, I downloaded the intro dirty and the dirty all the time. And that's just the same track taking up more space. And then the more and more you do that, the more space it takes up in your laptop. When I first started, I only had 128 hard drive on my laptop. I do have a terabyte now, so it's a lot easier to manage my music, but you might not have that much space 
place. And especially because MacBooks are expensive. MacBooks are expensive. The more and more memory you get, the more expensive they are. So when you first start DJing, you are gonna go for the lower end. You can have a music library and have 256 gigabytes of space on your laptop, but I would recommend going for 512. I feel like 512 is now the sweet spot for your music library. If you've got 512, then by all means, download both of the versions. But when you're on your record pools, have a little think. Do you need both tracks? Do you need both versions? And also, if you're always, always using intro versions, just download the intro version. Like a lot of DJs just play intro versions. And I feel like if you just play intro versions, you miss out on other tracks that you don't have intro versions for. So when you're downloading intro versions and playing intro versions, just have a think. Do I always need to play the intro version? And you can save yourself a lot of memory. But a lot of DJs have six or seven variations of the same track. Cut those down. You don't need all of them. Like for me, like I said, I don't need the cleans. So I got rid of the cleans. Think about your situation. Do you need all these multiple versions? Go through your music library, audio music library by song and scroll through and see if you've got tracks that have more than two versions of the track. Go through and see which ones you don't need and then delete them. The next sign that your Serato library is a mess is if you have a load of random crates. The amount of times I go and see a DJ's music library and their crate system is crazy. Like they're scrolling, 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 looking for all these different crates. And I do understand when you're practicing, when you're in the moment or when you're on the fly, you create a crate. I've created many a crate when I'm being DJing because I need to remind myself when I go home to go organize. But when you go home, sort them out and clean them out. I personally think you shouldn't have to scroll your crates on the left hand side. All your crates should be in front of you. And then the only time you should be scrolling them is if you've clicked a sub crate. And that's it, that is it. There shouldn't be all these random crates. And the amount of times I've seen inside DJ's crates and they just have one track in there. That one track is taking up so much space. So delete those crates. Any crates that have random names, one track in there, or you've used it for a certain party or a certain mix, just delete it. You don't need it. On the left hand side, you should have crates that are reusable. In my music library, I have early doors and main set. I know that I'm gonna use these crates. Inside each of them, they have a sub crate. Every single crate inside there has a, has a purpose. If a crate doesn't have a purpose, I just delete it because there is no need to have all these random crates. The amount of times people have said to me, CB, you need to develop a search crate function in Serato. I don't. You need to clean up your crates. Clean up your crates and it will make your Serato library look a lot better. Another sign that your music library is a mess is if you haven't got your music separated by opening, warm up, and main set. I feel like it's so important to have your music library separated into different sections of the night so you know what crates to go into during that time. Because there's nothing worse than being in a warm up, having to keep searching and scrolling for specific warm up tracks. Why don't you just build a crate for warm up so when you go inside that crate, all those tracks are ready for warm up? Best example for me is DJs always ask me, What songs do I play first? What songs songs I play at the start. Build an opening crate and you will have all the tracks that you need. It does take a lot of work up front. Like I went through every single track in my music library, all 10,000 tracks I went through and I marked it with opening, warm up, main set or delete. When you go through your music library and delete tracks, it condenses down your music library and you realize that you have a bunch of tracks in there that you will never ever play. So just delete them. And then once you've marked all the tracks, you now have an opening, a warm up and a main set section that you can go to during that point in the night. Oh, it's opening. Let me go inside my opening crate. When I'm DJing now, I literally just close my eyes, scroll, click the first song in my opening crate, and that's the first song that I'll play at the start of the night. Warm up, every single track in there, I can get people dancing. Main set, that's all the best tracks that I play in the peak of the night when it's 1 a.m., 2 a.m., when everyone's smashed. The main set one will have a bit of maintenance every now and again because songs go in and out of fashion, but opening, that doesn't change. Those tracks are always going to be opening because they're going to be low energy, etc. Go through your music library. I know it's going to take a long time, but trust me, you'll get to know your music library and you'll understand it a lot better and when you're DJing you'll just know where everything is. Another sign that your music library is a mess is if you can't find songs quickly and this goes back to what I said about the genres. If you cannot find tracks quickly in your music library you need to clean it up and the best way to clean it up is organizing by genre. Clean up your genre tags DJs and it will make life easier. If you clean up all your genre tags I need to play R&B click R&B. I need to play reggae click reggae. I need to play dance click dance. Everything is so much easier when you've organized by genres. All the automated solutions are down in the description down below. Get your genres organized and sorted quick, quickly DJs and I guarantee your DJ sets will be a lot better. 
Another sign that your music library is a mess is if you're still using Apple Music or iTunes. When I first started DJing, the first thing I'd done was chuck all my music inside the iTunes. Now, what it done was it gave me a terrible folder structure on my computer, and when it came to moving out of iTunes, it was a massive nightmare. And I know a lot of you watching now are wanting to get out of iTunes, but you physically don't know how. I'm gonna try and create some content on how to get out of iTunes. The, the process of getting out is just so overcomplicated. If you wanna go from iTunes to, to using folders on your computer, it is such a headache. I have a process that I use, but I haven't got it documented yet, which I'm gonna put into a document and be able to give to you guys soon. If you're still in iTunes, trust me, you need to get out because there's gonna be a point, maybe not now, maybe not next year, maybe not the year after, but there's gonna be a point where you're gonna to wanna to get out of iTunes. Whether you move laptop, you wanna start organizing, one of those two things are gonna make you wanna come out of iTunes and you are gonna struggle, right? So you need to have a process of getting out of iTunes. If you're not in iTunes, perfect. The way you should have your music library organized is by folders on your laptop where you've got an, an overall all music folder and inside there you have all the different genres in your music library and then your tracks inside those tracks. That is how I manage my music and I feel like that's the best way every single DJ should organize their music on their laptop. The next sign that your music library is a mess is if you're downloading too many tracks before you've even organized your music library. Now, I know how annoying it is. You wanna organize your music library, but then you need to keep up to date with all the new music because you're DJing weekly. I get it. That just means you need to dedicate more and more time to organize it. I only download music once a week. Every Thursday when all my record pools update, I download all my music. That leaves me with six other days to organize my music library. Now, you don't have to do everything in one sitting. I keep saying this to all DJs. You don't need to do everything in one sitting. Spend 20 minutes a day. 20 minutes is nothing. You spend about eight hours on your phone. Take 20 minutes out of that and organize your music library. Clean up your music library six out of the seven days and I guarantee it will be in a better place in a month's time. Once you've organized your music library, then when you add new music into your music library, you're gonna know where to put it and you're also gonna be a lot more strict when you put music into your music library. Trust me, once you've organized all your music, right, and you've got everything in nice folders, you're not gonna wanna mess it up. So now you'll think twice when you download new music. Do I need that track? Where am I actually gonna put this? What genre is it? You're gonna think about all these different things and you're gonna be able to keep your music library nice and organized. Another sign that your music library is a mess is if you're scrolling through your music library and you're stressed during a DJ set. I used to be this guy being inside all my DJ sets, scrolling, 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 being like, where is this track? Where is this track? Where is this track? And I'm just like, I could not deal with it anymore. So that's when I organized my music library. The main thing I got out of it was I had tracks inside crates that weren't supposed to be in there. I personally think that you should have a crate for every single scenario inside the club. There's gonna be a point in the night where you need to open up. There's gonna be a point in the night to, to get the field of dance floor. There's gonna be a point in the night to get the girls the dance floor. There's gonna be a point in the night to warm down the dance floor and get everyone out. You need to have a crate for all these specific scenarios. And then when you do have a crate for all these specific scenarios, you will be scrolling less because when you're inside that crate, for example, warm up, every single track in there should be ready for warm up. So you shouldn't be scrolling. You shouldn't be scrolling. You need to organize your crates so they fit certain scenarios so you'll stop stressing. There is nothing worse than stressing during a DJ set because you're scrolling, you're stressing, you're sweating, you're... it is just way too much. I've been there, DJs, I've been there. And this is why I've spent so many years trying to perfect the perfect music library. And I personally think my music library that I have now is perfect. Think about how you're gonna organize your music library. Use all the tips that I use in all my videos and just try and clean everything up. I guarantee, clean up your genres. The main part of this video, yeah, is if you clean up your genres, it'll make your Serato library a lot easier to navigate and to organize. Another sign that your Serato library is a mess is if you keep saying to yourself, I'm going to fix it soon. I'm gonna do it next week. I'm gonna start on Monday. All these things I've heard. I've said it in my head before. I've heard it from other DJs. Oh yeah, I'm gonna start organizing my music library next week. And then it comes to next week and they're like, oh, I can't be bothered. Oh, it's too much because it is too much. Organizing a music library is long. There's 10,000 tracks, you don't know where to start. And I'm telling you, the place to start is genres. Clean up all your genres and I guarantee you'll be in a better place in a month's time. If you have your genres cleaned up, you know where to go for your music and you can spend your time organizing inside specific crates. For me, I open my laptop and I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna organize my dancehall music today. I go inside my dancehall crate, I order it by number and I go through each track one by one. Am I gonna play this track? Is it a warm up? Is it a main set? Or am I just gonna full on delete this? track. Clear out that so when, when I'm playing a dancehall set in my DJ set, I go into this crate and everything in there is ready for me. And then on from that, you can break it down a little bit more. Now, I don't suggest that you break it down too much because if you over-organize, you get yourself stressed. So inside my music library, inside my dancehall, I have old school dancehall and new school dancehall. And that's all I need. But you might want to do 90s dancehall, 2000s dancehall, girls dancehall, all these different variations. And you can do all that if you've organized your genres. So DJs, organize your genres and your music library will be a 
lot cleaner. So that's me going through all the different ways your Serato library may be a mess. If you want some more Serato library videos, then I suggest you watch this video here.